Good morning students. Today we will continue with our chapter number 6, the circulatory system. Today we will study about the blood groups present in human beings on the basis of absence and presence of proteins called antigens and antibodies on the surface of the red blood cells the human blood is divided into four groups a b a b and o this system of division of the blood cells is known as a b o system according to this system there are two antigens a and b associated with their two antibodies small a and small b antigens are the proteins present on the surface of the rbcs and antibodies are present in plasma both antigen and antibodies work against each other if they have similar types are working together that means same antigen and same antibody is working together then the red blood cells clump and burst so they work against each other Carl Landsteiner an Australian biologist developed this ABO system of classification of blood this classification as we have already discussed is based on the presence and absence of antigens and antibodies and the RH factor. In 1940, Carl Lanciner and Alexander Winner discovered another important factor of blood called RH factor. RH factor or also called the rhesus factor is a type of antigen or you can say it is a type of protein which was first found in the RBC of rhesus monkey and so it is named the rhesus factor or in short the RH factor. People who have the RH factor are called RH positive and the people who do not have RH factor or RH factor is absent in the blood then they are called RH negative more than 85% of people are RH positive people without the rhesus factor in their blood are called RH negative so if RH factor is present the blood groups are A positive, B positive, AB positive or O positive if the RH factor is absent, the blood groups may be A negative, B negative, AB negative and O negative. Here is the description of the four types of blood group along with the antigen and the antibodies present in it. So blood group A has the antigen A and antibody B. The B blood group has the antigen B and antibody A. The blood group AB has the antigen A and B and no antibodies. The blood group O has no antigens. Antigens are not present and both A and B antibodies are present. What is blood transfusion? Sometimes severe blood losses occur due to some injury, accident or certain illness. In such cases, blood from a healthy person is transferred to the needy person. So, the transfer of blood from one person to another is called blood transfusion. The person who receives the blood is called the recipient the person who donates the blood is called the donor. Transfusion is blo of blood is done only after cross-checking the blood groups of the patient and the donor. Wrong blood transfusion may cause death of the recipient due to clumping of the RBCs. Here's a description 
of the blood groups which can donate blood to which blood group and can receive blood from which blood groups so the blood group a can donate the blood to a blood group and ab blood group and can receive the blood from a and o the blood group b can donate the blood to groups b and ab and they can receive the blood from the blood groups b and o the blood group ab can donate the blood only to the blood group ab and it can receive the blood from all the groups that is a b ab and o the blood group o can donate the blood to all the groups that is a b ab and o but it can receive the blood only from the blood group o that is why the blood group ab is called the universal recipient as it can receive the blood from all the blood groups and the blood group o is called the universal donor as it can donate the blood to all the blood groups blood donation blood donation is donating our blood for a noble cause it is the most significant contribution that a person makes towards the society worldwide many people need blood for various reasons they may be attacked by severe anemia have undergone operation or met with an accident but such patients may die as blood is not available very easily blood donation is our human duty it is not harmful to donate blood the body of the donor can regenerate the blood within a few days nowadays public awareness is noticed to donate blood many clubs colleges societies organize blood donation camps on different occasions a steady supply of donors is needed to ensure a continuous source of blood in the blood banks because certain blood components last only for a short period of time like platelets must be used within days of being banked in contrast hemoglobin can last for several years the following conditions are necessary for a person to donate blood the person must be above the age of 15 to 17 years and under the age of 55 to 60 years the donor should have a good health the donor must pass the physical and health tests given prior to the donating the blood before donating the blood certain test of the donor must be performed like the blood type based on the abo system that is a b ab or o the rh factor that is positive or negative test for hiv and test for any other type of disease to store the donated blood properly the blood banks have been established worldwide in the hospitals there is an exclusive department that takes care of blood related issues it is called blood bank nowadays the blood banks collect the blood and carefully test for its type so the blood bank are the specialized medical centers where the donated human blood is stored for the blood transfusion the blood collected is separated into various components like rbcs wbcs platelets and plasma so that they can be used most effectively according to the needs of the patient like suppose a person needs only platelets the platelets are less in number so that particular patient will be provided the platelets only rbcs carry oxygen platelets help in blood clotting and plasma has a specific important proteins that help in many important functions blood vessels are the transport network of our body system in a general way we can say a vessel is defined as a hollow tube for carrying liquids in the human body there is a network of blood vessels that carries substances 
to and from various parts of the body this system of blood vessel comprises of arteries veins and capillaries the heart pumps the blood into these vessels which is then carried to all parts of the body the structure of each type of blood vessel is closely related to its function during the blood circulation the arteries carry the blood away from the heart the capillaries connect the arteries to the veins and the veins carry blood back to the heart the arteries are thick walled elastic and muscular vessels with a narrow lumen in which the blood flows with jerks they carry pure that is oxygenated blood away from the heart to various parts of the body only the pulmonary artery carries impure that is deoxygenated blood to the lungs the veins are thin walled and less muscular veins vessels with walls they have a wider lumen in which the blood flows smoothly they carry impure that is deoxygenated blood back to the heart from different parts of the body only the pulmonary vein carries pure oxygenated blood from the lungs what are the differences between arteries and veins arteries are located deep beneath the skin the veins are located close to the skin arteries carry blood away from the heart to various organs and tissues the veins bring blood from various organ and tissues to the heart the arteries have thick muscular walls the veins have thin muscular walls arteries have a narrow lumen in which the blood flows with jerks the veins have a wide lumen in which the blood flows smoothly arteries do not have any valve veins have valves which control the unidirectional flow of blood capillaries are the fine blood vessels connecting the arteries with the veins the wall of the capillary is very thin as you can see in the figure it is only one cell thick through which oxygen nutrients and carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood are diffused out into the cells of the body now we will do a comparison between arteries veins and capillaries first the direction of flow of blood the arteries blood flows away from the heart except in the pulmonary artery veins bring back the blood to the heart except in pulmonary vein capillaries the blood flows through the organs to and from the cells pressure in arteries the pressure of blood is high in veins it is low and capillaries it is medium the oxygen content in the arteries the oxygen content is high except in pulmonary artery in veins the oxygen content is low except in pulmonary vein and in capillaries the oxygen diffuses out through the wall the size of the lumen in artery it is relatively small in vein it is relatively large and in capillary it is small about the diameter of a red blood cell the properties of the wall in artery the walls are tough and elastic in veins the walls are thin and distended easily and in capillary the walls are one cell thick and easily permeable